You might be luck. I just know that. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على محمد على آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إن شاء الله تعالى continuing the reading of the book by Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan Hafizahullah well known as Al-Mulakhas Al-Fiqhi and whereas we reach the Bab or the Kitab Al-Salah and we reach the Bab that is Bab Fi Wujub Al-Salat Al-Jama'a Wa Fadliha the chapter dealing with the obligation of the congregational prayer and its virtues. We reach, alhamdulillah, whereas the Shaykh Rahafidahullah gave us the proofs and evidence from the Kitab, from the Sunnah, and from the actions of the Salaf, the actions of the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in. From the verses that we mentioned, was the statement of Allah, وَإِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَلْيَقُمْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ Surah An-Nisa, verse 102. Allah Jalla wa Ala, he mentioned, فَإِذَا قُمْتَ فِيهِمْ And if you are present in their mix, بِمَعْنَا For the leader of the expedition, the leader of the expedition, and here he is talking about the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام, is this, this verse, is بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ It is, the nuzul is khas, but the meaning is عام. The reason why it was revealed is very specific, limited to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that predicament, but it is عام, it is general for every single given time where the situation is applicable to. This is also one of the qa'idah or the qawaid in regard to yani the tafsir. So Allah Jalla mentioned إِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ and if you are among them meaning in the expedition in the war in the battlefield فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةِ فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمْ الصَّلَاةِ So that shows that it is Salatul Jama'ah. So if the Salatul Jama'ah is even to be held at the time of fear, this is what is called Salatul Khawf and the Kayfiyah, the how about, inshaAllah Jalla will deal with it بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَلَىٰ as the, some of the uh, pages to come. So the Salatul Jama'ah, even at the times of war, it is not lifted. It is not lifted, even at the time of war. And if it is to be established, and certain things from the Salawat, or from the Salah is to be, is excused, is you are forgiven not to do it, just to hold the Salatul Jama'ah, then that shows the great, obligation that is in establishing the Salatul Jama'ah from the Ahadith 
from the hadith is the statement of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna athqal as-salati ala al-munafiqeen salatu al-isha wa salatu al-fajr the most heaviest one the most burdenful the most heaviest salah upon the hypocrites are these two salah salatu al-isha and salatu al-fajr and here he mentioned law ya'lamuna ma fihima if they knew what is the reward that is in it if we know what is the reward that is in it la atawhuma wa law habwa that we will come to it if they will not know it they will come to it if we don't know how much of a reward is in it that they will come they will attend the salatul jama'a the congregational prayer even if they are to be crawling even if they are to be on their four limbs to be crawling and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he continued to say in the same hadith walaqad hamamtu and i wish that an amura that i commend bis salati that I wish that the salah was in and I will commend for someone to establish the salah and I will thumma la amuru rajulan fa yusalli bin nas and I will commend uh, one of the men to establish the salah to lead the salah thumma talaqa ma'ya bi rijal and I will move on with some men and they will have with them some firewood or some fire flames so that i will burn ila qaumin la yashhaduna as-salata so i will burn the house of those who are not yani been they are not present in the salah but shasal al-fawdan hafizahullah he mentioned in this hadith that the the, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it can be yani istinba it can be driven from this hadith in two aspects to show the obligation of the salatul jamaa the first aspect is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described those alladhina yakhtalifuna 'an as-salah bin nifaq then he described them with the description of being what a huh? hypocrite the hypocrite he described them to be hypocrite so therefore that فدل ذلك على انهم يختلفون عن واجب that is a proof that they have abandoned something that is wajib the fact that they were being described as hypocrite that's one but the shaykh hafizahullah mentioned something that is very fundamental it is not because a person اختلف عن السنه because a person he and he is he uh, he, di- he did not bring about a sunnah that you will say that he is a hypocrite it's not because a person miss a sunnah that you will say he is a hypocrite tayyib on the nahiyah to thaniyah in the second aspect of this narration to show its obligation is that they were about to be burnt along with their homes so that uquba that punishment right punishment it entails that you abandon something of an obligation punishment is only subjected to someone that has abandoned something that is of a an obligation right abandoning something that is of an obligation so on that nahiya on that angle it is an it is to show that it is the the salatul jamaa is an obligation naam and likewise now the dalil that we read in regard to the ijma'u salaf right how the salaf they used to see that the salah eh, salatu jamaa is an obligation one barakallahu fikum is the statement of ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu he say wa laqad ra'aytuna wa ma yatakhallafa anha illa munafiq ma'lum nifaq wa laqad kana ar-rajul yu'ta bihi yuhadi bayna ar-rajulayn hatta yuqam fi as-saf he say ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu he say that we used to see that the one that 
does not witness the Salatul Jama'ah to be a hypocrite. But not any kind of hypocrite, but a hypocrite that his hypocrisy is ma'lumun. It's known. It's known of his hypocrisy. And he mentioned, Rahi radiallahu anhu, that wala qad kana ar-rajulu, that a man that is not having the ability to come to the masjid, maybe due to an illness or due to a leg injury or whatever the case might be, that you will see him to be brought while he will be holding on two men. They will carry him until that they will place him tayyib hatta yuqama fi saf until he will be placed on the ranks. Now think about this. If the Sahaba, they did not take the Salatul Jama'ah serious, that a person that is that has a handicap, he has a you know broken leg or things like this, but still, if they cannot crawl, they will have two individuals carry them and put them on the ranks. That shows, Barakallah Fikum, how they were serious in me in regard to, in regard to establishing the Salatul Jama'ah. Likewise, we mentioned Barakallah Fikum. The riwayah of Imam Ahmed, Rahimahullah, wa ghayrihi, and other than the riwayah of Imam Ahmed. And we mentioned that riwayah was mawquf. No, ma, marfu'r. Not mawquf, but marfu'r. The riwayah was marfu'r. Right? You have three types of riwayat. You have what is called riwayah that is marfu'r. You have another riway that is mawquf and another one that is maqtu' maqtu' marfu' first level mawquf second level maqtu' third level and I give the homework for the brothers to alhamdulillah do a little bit of research on that level on that thing Anybody? That's the, that's the second week, actually. I didn't ask for the homework last week. The homework was due last, the week before last. <coughs> Let me hear the excuses now. Since I can't see no homework, Bismillah. Yeah, that's a good excuse. Go. And I say written, in a written form. I will make it more organized. Sure. Where's your homework? Huh? You didn't know about it? You were absent? Bad excuse. Abu Mansur, are your homework? I was, I was working on it. Oh, mashallah. I, I like that. More research? Okay. Now I'm going to just give a hint, inshallah, but I'm going to push for the homework for next week again. I'm going to give a hint. You see those three levels, right? We say, what was the first one? Marfu'ah, Marfu'ah. The second level was Mawquf. The third level was Maqtu'ah, Maqtu'ah, right? Now, hear those, those three levels, right? We get the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We get the Sahaba. And we get the Tabi'een. So, those three words... In regard to the hadith, refer to these three. One each. Marfu' Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mawquf, the companions. Maqtu' the tabi'een. Now this is really...